Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today we are checking out Explain Everything, which is a whiteboard application. We're going to show you some of the features, give you a bit of the information, who it's most suitable for in today's video, so you can go out and see if this is an application for you. So without further ado, let's roll into today's video. So before we begin, please do make sure you hit subscribe. It'd be great to have you here in the Keep Productive community. We do plenty of features like this, so you can join us for plenty more. So let's start with a little bit about the pricing now. I think this is always important to jump into. Now, it has got a free account for up to three projects, which is fairly typical with applications like this. We've seen it with Miro allowing you to do three boards with this. And naturally, it's got the ability to collaborate with voice chat. So you won't be able to necessarily use the video chat, but you'll be able to use the web video link sharing, which is very handy. So for example, you'll be able to set up a whiteboard and start collaborating on it together. You can use it on any device with that free plan, but with the paid plans, which are 6 99 in euros so roughly i think that's about 7.99 per month um you will be able to get unlimited projects unlimited slides and 20 gigabytes of storage you'll be able to unlimited recording as well which is a handy feature especially for those who are looking to make a quick recording for their students or who are looking to make a quick recording for their team now this application actually markets itself both as a team communication tool and also a school communication tool. You can add a code in here and actually join them even if you don't have an account. But let's go and show you inside of the experience. So here we are inside of the application and much like the title explain explains everything, you can go ahead and create these little boards to demonstrate whatever you like. Now, as I said, there's only three projects you can open in the free plan. So in this case, I am actually at my maximum. So in order to do that, I need to actually delete them to move forward. So that's just something to note. If you're looking to keep the free projects going and your free account moving forward, then you're going to have to limit yourself to how many actual projects outside of here that you can have. So if I go ahead and click create new project, you can see that when I get started, I'm joined by what options I would need. You can actually send all of your sort of work around a file or a document or a video. So for example, if you and your team have launched a, a new uh, you know, announcement in the video and you want to demonstrate uh, in front of your team an MP4 file, then you can definitely go into there and start that. But if you're someone that's like, for example, a teacher or you are a, a student or you're just looking to use this as a way to start a meeting, template's a good place to start. Now, I was a bit disappointed because there wasn't as many templates as I thought there would be. However, if you, there are a few that might be useful. For example, with meetings, there's this quite nice visual um, sort of collaboration area. Um, there's Venn diagrams and also timelines that you can jump into and cause and effect stuff, as well as video explainers and sort of the regular whiteboard, custom color, black chalkboard, um, storyboard. Nothing that I guess you wouldn't expect in another application. So in this case, what I'm going to do is go onto the meeting one to demonstrate what it would like to be using Explain Everything for a meeting. Now, as you can see, when you enter, you can actually join with the microphone on. And let me explain how that works first. Up in the top right hand corner, you can see that I am inside of here. You can mute me. As you can see, I'm muted. But as you can imagine, once you share this link, you can start with voice communication, which is pretty good. So all you have to do is share that link there or invite them through this code here that you could appear at the top which is perfect if you're looking to just send somebody an invite without them having to install anything. You can also access permissions where only certain people are editing stuff. If you have a students or class members that you don't want accessing certain areas or just messing up the area in front of you as you're doing a lesson. You can also change the scenario to uh, open collaboration so everyone can just you know do whatever they want to the front page as long as their permissions are set or you can go into presentation mode so the audience only follows and also interactive broadcasts so you can share your whiteboard in other applications. And I believe that's through applications like Zoom. And over on this left hand side, you can see the real magic of this application. It's really about being able to interact with what's on the screen. So you have this canvas in front of you and uh, naturally you get different, um, obviously you can add more of them if you want to. So you can add more slides, um, but remember, 
unlimited slides is available through the pro plan. You're only limited one slide for the free plan. So naturally, if you had the pro plan, you could have more slides per workspace or project. So as you can see here, they've got this sort of setup. You can interact with some of the stuff on the page. Um, and as long as you're sort of using the little hand tool, but you can use the drawing tool and the drawing tool works well on the iPad. I've heard good things about it working well on iPad. You can use highlighter as well, eraser, all the regular stuff you'd expect in an application and even text as well. So for example, if I wanted to start with the agenda item of any other business, <laughs> it's normally at the end of agenda, but I can make this smaller if I wanted to and I can highlight the text and uh, reduce that down if I wanted to as well. Now, one thing I'd say is the all the sort of settings on a side are really easy to access. However, I find them much more simplistic than an application like Miro. If you're looking for an, a more advanced way to use a canvas, I'd probably give kudos to Miro here, not only because the templates are better, but because you can add more elements that are maybe more useful for teams. For example, boards are a specific example that they don't allow you to add. Although you are allowed to add a range of different multimedia. You can add existing images from your computer. You can add files from your computer, clip art, existing audio, picture, screenshot. And what's good is if you choose one of these options, it not only gives you the option to add from your computer, but it also gives the options to find it from your drive, which is specifically helpful if you've already got an explain everything account and you are on the paid plan, you can store up to 20 gigabytes and be able to re-upload stuff if you want to. Now you can screenshot, all very handy there. Now what I would say is the magic feature of this application is really the record and editing abilities, which I didn't expect to be that good. Now as you can see here down at the bottom, you can turn your camera on and off, well the camera on the page that is, and you can actually move it uh, to suit where you want the positioning to be. So that's the camera. And as you can imagine, you can record. So if I wanted to start a recording, the recording is started. And as you can see here, I can move around, I can change the tool I'm on, move some of the elements, and maybe even draw stuff. You're gonna see some pretty terrible writing here uh, using my mouth. So as you can see here, all I have to do is go and stop that recording. And I believe you get up to one minute of recording on the free count. So as you can see here, I can carry on recording if I want to. And that's quite helpful if you're specifically pausing and starting again. But what's really good is I can actually play this back from the beginning. If I wanted to start a recording, the recording is started. And as you can see here, I could... So everything seems to work. And what's very cool is you can actually interact. You can cut stuff. Um, you can section stuff off, split it up. Um, and that's really helpful if you're looking to make edits and delete certain elements of it. Uh, in this case, I could delete uh, this section here. So there you go. So I could, I could, for example, make a demonstration video and then um, be, for example, cutting bits out that I don't want to. You can use the zoom ins and zoom outs to find everything there. And uh, naturally, uh, it's, for example, you can use like the fade in. So it's got quite good abilities and you can create a video web link for that too. So there you go, the video is created. And if I, for example, copied that and emailed it to someone, once it's left processing, because it still has to process that once it's done, um, I can actually send that to someone. For example, this could be specifically helpful for students wanting to demonstrate stuff. So the recording abilities are something that are pretty impressive in this application. And it's something that just adds that extra layer to this experience that makes it better. But I would say much more for stu students and for teachers than actually for uh, professionals, because I, I think the way that they've laid this out doesn't really feel more professional. It feels a bit sort of more teacher focused than it is, because I think professionals would probably want it a little bit cleaner than this, a little bit easier to consume whereas this feels very muddled, much more sort of not saying teachers are muddled, but it's much more sort of relaxed and um, easier to be able to consume uh, when you're a teacher, especially with EdTech being the way it is. So up here as well, you can change some of the framing options and change the project name if you want to. But apart from that, that's really the core elements of this application. Now I mentioned as well that you can go into my account, you can see here your storage, you get 500 megabytes of drive 
space inside of the free account. And you can allow other people to you know, join your code, which you can add up here, and you can add that code, and they'll, you'll instantly be able to join that one there. You can also delete your account from here and all the other goodness. So as you can see, some of the demonstrations are definitely much more suited for education than they are for meetings. So I would say this is much better for that sector versus an application like Miro, which is much more suited for designers, creatives, and also professionals. So this would be a perfect way to demonstrate stuff visually and naturally be able to um, send it to other people. I think the special features of this is the easy way of sharing stuff and being able to quickly join a meeting and also some of the visual demonstrations with the recordings. Definitely something that I think is very beneficial for teachers and professionals. So guys, hopefully you found this one useful. It is something that is naturally growing in popularity and I would recommend it more for iPad users as well especially if you're looking to use the iPad I, Apple Pencil I want to call it, call it the iPad Pencil um, but guys hopefully you found this one useful let me know whether you're, you're using an application like this in the comments below and it'd be fantastic to hear how you're getting on anyway guys please do make sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you all very soon cheerio